Radio Online, news that matters. Local support for a portion of today's programming is provided by Wells Fargo. Our support of Aggie students goes beyond just banking. By supporting News 22, we're giving back to the community. Wells Fargo. Together, we'll go far. Tonight on News 22, American Indian Week is off to a strong start at NMSU. Crystal Corrales shows us a football team who is changing the game, and it's not Powder Puff. And if you've never seen Carlsbad Caverns, you may now have your chance. Find out how on News 22 Wednesday. Serving Southern New Mexico, this is the award-winning KRWG-TV News 22, where news matters. Good evening, everyone. I'm Whitley Newberry. And I'm Mike Vigil. Crime Stoppers needs your help finding the vandal who's been breaking windows at Sierra Middle School. Since February, nine windows have been broken. The latest broken windows were discovered on Monday, and all of them have been broken at a new gymnasium. School District spokeswoman Joe Galvan says it's already cost the school district more than $2,500 and a lot of headaches. Target by somebody or several people. Um, the police are looking into it. They're doing in their investigation. We had one uh, window or two broken in February. February. Then we had a couple more during spring break, actually several. And then uh, Monday, we had six more. So um, we think maybe rocks were being used. And at this point, we need the community's help. If you have any information, call Crime Stoppers at 1-800-222-TIPS. They're offering a $1,000 reward. Las Cruces police are looking for the man who robbed an East Mesa Church's chicken at gunpoint. Police say the man took an unknown amount of money last night after he flashed a handgun at employees. He then fled from the churches on Baton Memorial. Witnesses say the man is white with an average build. He was last seen wearing a gray sweater, blue jeans, and black combat boots. If you have any information, please contact LCPD. Prosecutors have hit another snag in the murder case of former Santa Fe deputy Tai Chan. Defense attorneys are now questioning the credibility of two police officials who are testifying next month. One motion involves the chief investigator who says she was denied resources because she reported a sexual assault by another detective. The second motion questions the truthfulness of the arresting officer. The defense wants to re-interview both before next month's trial. A Mexican man is in custody after he tried smuggling 16 and a half pounds of cocaine and gun parts past the Santa Teresa port of entry. The driver, a 26-year-old man from Chihuahua, was busted last Saturday. Agents noticed strange looking items in the engine. Dogs then investigated the car and found the cocaine. The street value is valued at half a million dollars. The man was turned over to ICE agents. He's now facing drug smuggling charges. And crime affects everyone, but some crimes are more devastating than others. This past weekend, victims and other survivors came together to support each other and raise awareness. News 22's Stephanie Cordova has the story. Students from Las Cruces High School held hands and sang, We Are the World, a song that shows community and working together. And that was a major theme for the beginning of National Crime Victims' Right Week. There's about 50 agencies and organizations that have come together to let, again, each and every one of these family members, let our community know that we, we come together and we've got your back. And if you're, you're struggling in any way, if you need assistance in any way, we're going to be here for you. And that's the beauty of having all these agencies and organizations come together on this special day. The centerpiece of the Victims Expo was a memorial walk led by Matachines at Young Park to remember the victims of crime. We're trying to teach the kids today that violence is not the way to go. Yeah. The event brings families together that share the same sorrow when losing a loved one, like this mother whose son was killed brutally. Rita Olivas had twin boys, Jorge and Carlos Olivas. One day in February 2004, they were walking home from a teen club. The police report says they got into an altercation with some other boys. Jorge was shot and killed. 
Rita says Jorge was a strong, athletic 14-year-old who took care of her and his younger siblings. She says she's been coming to the crime victims event for the past 10 years, and it helps her deal with her loss. Rosales says Rita is not alone. Many people see this event as a way to heal, and there's lots of organizations here to help. And that's the beauty of having all these agencies and organizations come together on this special day. Um, it's an honor for me to come out and to be a part of something so special because, again, you look at our stage, you see those babies that, that have fallen. They're, they're, they're no longer here with us, and their families have been impacted. Our community has been impacted. Rita says she'll be back next year to continue to honor her son and to walk with other people who have also suffered loss. Stephanie Cordova, News 22. The wind is gone, beautiful skies, beautiful day here in Las Cruces again. Yeah, it's so nice. Well, Selena is next with our look at weather. Thanks, guys. And yeah, we have been getting a lot of wind lately, but right now our winds have calmed down. Um, we're looking at skies that are pretty clear, temperature at 67 degrees. Our winds are at 3 miles per hour coming from the south. Our humidity isn't too bad at 11 percent, dew point at 11 degrees, and barometer at a steady 30.07 inches. Today we did reach a high of 76 degrees, which is right where we are supposed to be at, average at 77. We had an overnight low at 43 degrees, and we set records in 1989 at 91 degrees to be the high, and in 1973 at 30s to be the low. Uh, today we didn't see any rain today so our rain does still sit at 2.14 inches that's all I have right now for the weather now back to the desk for more news Governor Martinez is heading to the country music capital while lawmakers are left in limbo she'll be in Nashville Tennessee to speak at a law enforcement conference this means that several pieces of legislation await the governor until she's done traveling lawmakers say they are forced to wait until she takes action on spending and taxing bills involving school districts and bureaucratic retirement funds. The governor has until Friday. After that, if the bills are not signed, they'll automatically be vetoed. Las Cruces Public Schools is preparing for more budget cuts from the state. Some of which is expected to come from athletics. Blas Maestas reports. Ernest Viramontes is the athletic director for Las Cruces Public Schools, and he's the one crunching the numbers. Kind of, we're kind of in a budget freeze right now, a lot of waiting on what the governor and the legislature is going to do. Uh, All this waiting could affect how the Las Cruces Public Schools athletics are played next year. But Viramontes is optimistic about the upcoming seasons. Our, our, uh, my goal, with, uh, my plan as a home goal is that we're going to stay as is for another year. With an expected shortfall in the district's budget, more fields like these could possibly be empty next season. Viramontes says it would take something drastic to cut games, but you still want to maintain a level of competition. You don't want to cut any district games. Uh, I think statewide they would look at maybe the number of non-district games. Uh, and I think, we, you know, uh, maybe cut 10% from every sport, which comes down to like a game or two. The New Mexico Activities Association, which oversees high school sports, says district games could not be affected until the 2018-2019 season. With all the uncertainty of a budget crisis, Viramontes says the district is prepared to handle any sort of cut and that the kids will continue to compete. For News 22, I'm Blas Maestas. The wave of anticipation is rising here in Las Cruces as the city prepares for the arrival of Garth Brooks and Trisha Yearwood. Their setup crew arrived yesterday and have been busy preparing the Pan Am for the concert. Many fans are ready for the event. Oh, I'm super excited to see him. I got tickets with my best friend, and so we're going to go, and I think it's exciting that a big star is going to come to Las Cruces. This will be Garth Brooks' first time back in Las Cruces since 1996. Three of New Mexico's most culturally rich towns are taking each other on to see which is the best in the region. Taos, Madrid, and Cloudcroft are all in the running for USA Today's best small town in the Southwest. USA Today says they're all travel worthy for their natural beauty, culture, shopping, and more. Another one of the state's treasure, Carlsbad Caverns, will let you visit for free on the weekends of April 15th and April 22nd. The free admission is part of the National Park Week celebration. 
And stay tuned, Selena will be back with your national forecast. And later, we take a look at Native American Week. More on that when News 22 continues. Hi, I'm Norma Vichaud, Program Manager for KRWG. It's a brand new season and host Joseph Rosendo is headed on another journey. The new season of Joseph Rosendo's Travel Scope includes adventures to the Cook Islands in the Pacific, joining a parade of the medieval guilds during Zurich's festival, exploration of the stone figures on Easter Island, and the Amazon rainforest in Peru. Come scale new heights of adventure, natural splendor, and cultural richness this season. The travel adventure begins Sundays at 2 p.m. on KRWG. Watch MHZ Worldview on Digital Broadcast Channel 22.2. Every day, world news and public affairs, and every night, international dramas, all in English or with English subtitles. Worldview is also available on Comcast Channel 395 in Las Cruces and 399 in Silver City and Spectrum Channel 1271 in El Paso. Become a member anytime at krwg.org. And welcome back. You're watching News 22 Wednesday. Where news matters. American football is a tough sport, but they, they call it a contact sport, but really it's more of a collision sport. And it's not something many women want to do. But Crystal Corrales is here to tell us some women enjoy a good collision. That's right. And I found a group of Las Cruces women who are getting ready for their first big game. They call themselves La Muerte de las Cruces. Run it, run it. A tough group of women who aren't afraid to get dirty and bruised. The team got started last July when head coach Billy Avalos held tryouts. He said he's doing it in honor of his mom. My mother was my biggest inspiration. A strong person and you know if she can do a lot of things and influence me the way in a positive, why can't these ladies? And they're showing it every day. Most of the time, when you hear of women's football, you think of lingerie football where women dress in sexy outfits. But this is the real thing. Most athletes who suit up in helmets and pads like this are usually men, but these women say that's no reason why they shouldn't be able to express their passion for a sport that's dominated by men. These girls all really want to play football and they like the full contact, you know. I think most of them really like the aggressiveness, you know, a lot of these girls are very aggressive, and they're, they're strong girls. Why not? It is it is um, definitely um, doable, you know. We have so many women here that are mothers going to work, going to school. Like many of the players on the team, quarterback Aaron Boyd has a full-time job. She sells real estate. She's also a full-time mother and wife. But it still takes some getting used to. It's kind of like weird because I don't want no one hitting my mom. We don't walk on the field. And now mom becomes a football teacher as well as dad. I think it makes us closer because we can like bond now over football stuff. To show girls, young girls, um, that they can do anything. They can do anything a man can do. Um, to be able to come out here and play full contact football and to be able to take hits um, just shows them that they can do whatever they want to. I want to play for my mom's team. La Muerte de las Cruces will kick off their season this weekend at Salt Lake City, Utah to play against Utah Blitz. Their first home game will be on April 29th at the Field of Dreams versus the Rocky Mountain Thundercats. You can learn more about them on Facebook, La Muerte de las Cruces. For News 22, I'm Crystal Corrales. Back to you, Mike and Whitley. This is American Indian Week at NMSU, and Native students here on campus are showing everybody a little slice of their culture. News 22 Stephanie Muniz was there to see some dancing and taste the good food. Long lines formed early at the American Indian Student Center to get free Indian tacos. A big part of any Indian taco is making the fry bread. And then they add all of the ingredients, lettuce, tomatoes, ground beef, and beans. 
Um, some people have been out here since like 8 and I've been out here since 12 so pretty much all day. <laughs> Later in the afternoon, some of the contestants of the Miss Native American NMSU pageant came in and helped to get the tacos ready. The winner of the pageant will represent Native American students for the next year. Last year's winner was part of the panel on Tuesday talking about the importance of the pageant. I'll come up as a replacement and talk about some of the issues that I have seen throughout uh, my, my culture background and as a student as well, being a Native American and going to a big university. That's one of the most colorful parts of the week were the dancers. Raylene Yazi, the vice president for the Native American Business Student Association, says she hopes that this week will open lots of eyes. It's really exciting and fun to see everyone from different um, backgrounds come together and just um, be involved with what we're putting on for them. She also says that being from Arizona, the NMSU American Indian Week has made her more aware and proud of her own culture. Stephanie Muniz, News 22. And Selena's next with the weather.gov national forecast. Thanks, guys. We're going to take a look at temperatures around the nation right now. So if you go ahead and look at Seattle, they're at a 55 degrees, San Francisco at 67, Phoenix at a comfortable 85, Dallas at 71, El Paso at 72, Chicago at 42, Washington at 74, and Tampa at the highest of 90. Okay, so if you go ahead and look at our next map, you can definitely see that there's going to be some thunderstorms entering places like Charlotte. Uh, Atlanta, Nashville, and Cincinnati going down from Ohio all the way down to Georgia. They're going to be expecting some tornadoes, which is going to be pretty scary these next going into tonight and tomorrow. Along with the tornadoes, there's going to be large hail, flooding of downpours, and damaging winds. But that's not all, that's not the only place that's getting rain. If you go ahead and look at our next map, you can see that up north, also in the eastern part of the nation, they're going to be getting a mix of snow and rain, especially in places like Charleston and Detroit. But if you go ahead and look at New York and D.C., they're going to be getting some severe thunderstorms that are going to be pretty scary. There's going to be some coastal flooding and there's going to be money travel delays. For you baseball fans, there are going to be some MLB um, delays with some of the games, maybe for tomorrow. So you might want to take a look for that. The teams that might be affected are the Boston Red Sox, the New York Mets, and the Washington Nationals. That's all I have for your national forecast. I'll be back after the break with your New Mexico weather. Hi, I'm Michael Newman, host of New Mexico True Television, a travel series showcasing all the amazing things to do in the land of enchantment. Be sure to watch Saturday afternoons at 12.30 and Sunday nights at 10 on KRWG-TV. On Masterpiece. We are all fighting in our own way to prevent an even worse time to come. This is a dangerous time to become the subject of gossip. Starring Francesca Annis and Samantha Bond. Home Fires on Masterpiece. Thursday at 8 p.m. on KRWG-TV. Next time on POV, how much can you learn by just asking a question? How'd you meet Grandpa? When did you and Dad decide to adopt? What else? Hurry, hurry. I want to go home. I came up to her and I told her, Mom, I know you don't have money, so here's 15 bucks I made. She turned around and started crying. Listening is an act of love. A story course special. Only on POV. Friday at 9.30 p.m. on KRWG-TV. Welcome back everyone. We're going to go ahead and look at our temperatures around New Mexico right now. Up in Farmington at 52, Santa Fe at a chilly 30, Clovis at 55, Roswell at 63, here in Las Cruces at 67, and Deming at 65. For tomorrow we're going to reach some pretty mild highs. Farmington at 66, Santa Fe at 63, Clovis at 71, Roswell at 78, here in Las Cruces at 76, and Deming at 78. So if you go ahead and look at cities closer to home, Alamogordo will have some clear skies tonight with a 38 degree low. Tomorrow they're expecting a high of 77 degrees with some clouds in the sky. If you go ahead and look at TRC, they're going to have some clear skies tonight and tomorrow. Tonight with a low of 42 and a high of 79 tomorrow. At, in Silver City, they're also going to be expecting some clear skies. 
with a low tonight of 36 degrees and a high tomorrow of 72. And here in Las Cruces, we're going to have some clear skies tonight, but we're going to have some clouds tomorrow. Tonight with a low of 49 degrees and a high tomorrow of 80, so it's going to be pretty comfortable. That's all I have right now for your New Mexico forecast. I'll be back later on in the forecast with your five-day forecast. Now back to the desk for more news. A woman is in the hospital after being shot by Dallas police. That's the first story in tonight's Southwest Minute. Police say they got a call saying a woman broke into a Golden Chick restaurant. Officers arrived and saw the woman running out of the building with a knife in her hand. The woman ignored orders to drop the knife and police then tased her, then shot her when she kept coming. A woman and her children are dead after a house fire in Glendale, Arizona. Fire officials say it appears the family tried to escape but couldn't make it. The woman and her two sons were found first and a teenage girl was found later in the rubble. Investigators are now trying to determine the cause of the fire. And a suspect is dead after a shootout with police in Napa, California, yesterday afternoon. Officers responded to a call of shots being fired at a home when the gun battle began. The officers involved were treated at the scene for minor injuries. The incident is under investigation. I'm Raquel Andujo with the Southwest Minute. And Faith Schifani is next with sports. Thanks guys, coming up in sports, an Aggie women's golfer receives a special recognition. And later, a play of the day you won't want to miss. Don't lose faith because News 22 Sports is next. Take an emotional journey with young fighting men. From basic training through combat and more. Filmed on location in northern France, the dance company Ballet Boys marks World War I centennial with a unique feature-length drama created entirely through movement and dance. Join us for a war movie like no other. Feel the power of young men on great performances. Friday at 8 p.m. on KRWG-TV. Coming up on Austin City Limits. Saturday at 9 p.m. on KRWG-TV. This is KRWG-TV News 22 Sports. Welcome back. I'm Faith Schifani and let's talk sports. The NM State women's golf team finished eighth yesterday at the Hawkeye El Tigre Invitational in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. NMSU's Camille Orito was a powerhouse for the team as she moved the Aggies up the leaderboard towards their exemplary finish. Today she was named Western Athletic Conference Women's Golfer of the Week for her impressive performance at the Invitational. The Aggie women golfers will close out their regular season April 10th through 11th at the Dale McNamara Invitational in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And the NMSU softball team swung into action, defeating Utah Valley in a doubleheader on Saturday. The Aggies got off to a hot start in the first matchup, filling up the bases and bringing home two runs. They took the lead with a victory of 4-3. In the second match, they swept the Wolverines 7-4. NMSU will continue conference play as they travel to Seattle U to take on the Red Hawks in a three-game series beginning Friday. And the El Paso Chihuahuas 2017 season opens this week. Their opener uh, will be against Las Vegas, the Las Vegas 51s, tomorrow night at Southwest University Park. Their season will feature 71 home games out of a 142 game schedule that will run through August 31st. The Ch Chihuahuas will face Albuquerque, Fresno, Las Vegas, Reno, Sacramento, Salt Lake, and Tacoma twice as members of the PCL Pacific Conference. Fans look forward to what should be a great season. And tonight's play of the day is brought to you by Res Russell Westbrook and the Oklahoma City Thunder. Enjoy. Multi-year deal and got right on the floor, so he's second on those switches. Shot clock at five. Westbrook pulls. You bet. 
Fires it to Middleton, three to shoot, and Middleton can't finish. Rebound number 10 for Westbrook. Oh, great defensive possession. Will he get the assist? He will! Triple-double, number 41 for Russell Westbrook. A lot of wins this year, just with his dominant, competitive will and his spirit, and see him tap his heart there saying thank you. That's what an athlete lives for, moments like this, Ryan. Well, at the end of three quarters of play, speaking of greatness, Russell Westbrook showing it off again tonight. And that's all for sports tonight. Join us for more sports action tomorrow. Still ahead on News 22, Selena will be back to take a look at your five-day forecast. But first, we get an incredible light show from the International Space Station. We'll show you more when News 22 continues. Next time on Call the Midwife. It's going to be wonderful seeing a mother brimming over with excitement. In this case, it unsettles me. Telephone for an ambulance and the fire brigade. Valerie Dyer, I'm a nurse. Tell me what you need. Sunday at 7 p.m. on KRWG-TV. When the competition ends... If you know how, you can create a little bit of magic. Baking inspiration is just getting started. These masterclasses will get you baking in your own kitchen. We haven't got all day. Sunday at 3 p.m. on KRWG-TV. Clear sky Crew members from the International Space Station captured these glowing auroras above Earth last week. He says it was hard to look away from the windows. Auroras are caused when electrically charged particles released from the sun enter the Earth's atmosphere and collide with gases. The result is a light show around the magnetic poles of the northern and southern hemisphere. Well, that's a really beautiful sky we've had and a beautiful clear sky this week as well. Can you tell us what to expect this week? Oh yeah, so well this week we're going to be looking at partly cloudy skies all the way until Sunday. We're going to have some com comfortable temperatures, but going back down to the 70s on Sunday and Monday. That's all I got for your five day, but it's looking pretty good. And that's all for News 22 Wednesday. Thank you for joining us tonight. Good night. Good night. This news brief in Espanol is brought to you by Noticias 22, Spanish language news for Southern New Mexico and West Texas. Noticias 22. Hola, ¿qué tal? Los saluda Alfredo Naum en este breve informativo de Noticias 22. En Siria, un presunto ataque químico ocurrido el día de ayer ha causado la muerte de docenas de personas, incluyendo por lo menos 10 niños. Algunas imágenes un tanto perturbadoras muestran niños inconscientes y con dificultades para respirar por sí mismos. En el pasado, el régimen del presidente sirio Bashar al-Assad ha sido acusado de utilizar armas químicas en contra de la población. Sin embargo, el ejército sirio asegura no estar involucrado en el ataque y culpa a los grupos de rebeldes por esta matanza. El presidente Donald Trump calificó los ataques como un daño a la humanidad y condenó estos terribles hechos como intolerables por el gobierno de los Estados Unidos. Y oficiales de la Protección Fronteriza en Santa Teresa decomisaron más de 30 libras de cocaína el pasado sábado. Todo ocurrió cuando un hombre de 22 años, originario de El Paso, intentó ingresar al país los narcóticos a bordo de una Nissan Frontier. Gracias a la labor de un agente canino y a una inspección con rayos X, la droga fue identificada en paquetes colocados con cinta adhesiva en el interior del auto. Adicionalmente, en el puerto fronterizo de El Paso, fueron incautados más de 160 libras de marihuana, 20 de metanfetaminas y 63 gramos de cocaína, evitando así su distribución y venta en nuestras comunidades. Y esto ha sido todo para Noticias 22, Alfredo Naum. Local support for a portion of today's programming is provided by Wells Fargo. Our support of Aggie students goes beyond just banking. By supporting News 22, we're giving back to the community. Wells Fargo. Together, we'll go far. This is KRWG Las Cruces, serving the entire region thanks to your support. Become a member anytime at krwg.org. 
telecast of nature on KRWG TV is provided with local support from Wild Birds Unlimited, 2001 East Loman and Arroyo Plaza, featuring custom seed blends, bird feeders, bird baths, nature gifts, and a variety of items to create your own backyard sanctuary. Information can be found at wbu.com slash Las Cruces. Sierra Vista Growers, your regional resource for locally grown trees, shrubs, perennials, and xeriscape plants. Sierra Vista Growers, located at 2800 Highway 28 in La Union, New Mexico, helps conserve our water resources by providing a diverse selection of southwestern plants for the home, garden, or yard. That's Sierra Vista Growers. They can find prey without ever seeing it. They can fly as silently as ghosts. And they are powerful predators, both night and day. 